So one of the most popular third-party ROMs is back with a new update, and this time Lineage OS 21 comes in an Android 14 flavor. Here's how it runs, what's new, and if you should flash it on your smartphone. So I'm gonna level you with you real quick before I discuss Lineage OS 21. I want you to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and then leave a comment to tell me you love seeing content like this. We want to build the most engaged Android community on the internet, so you know what to do. I've told you, get to it. You're probably wondering why you should choose Lineage and why this is even an option. Well, even with lots of gesturing and posturing from tech brands about sustainability, many are really reluctant to address the issue of product longevity. Planned obsolescence is still part of a product life cycle, and here's where I think Lineage OS can actually pick up the pieces. Sure, many Android OEMs out there are extending the support window of their newer phones. That's awesome, and we really do applaud that. But the downside here is that your existing phone still isn't gonna get updated for quite as long. So for older phones out there, not lucky enough to be included in long-term update plans like the likes of Samsung, Honor, OnePlus, Oppo, and all of the others, a ROM like Lineage offers an expanded lifespan with zero extra cost to you. Yes, it's completely free. On top of that, Lineage OS 21 will get regular security patches and updates to ensure that you're safe from exploits and other security threats. One bonus might be even more enticing is that this lightweight pixel-like interface even includes lots of neat customizability options that you just won't find on Google's hardware lineup. This is AOSP at its core, and that means clean, simple, and hopefully better than a convoluted OEM skin. And right from the get-go, I would admit there is a larger emphasis here on Material U design language with clearer applications adhering to that core component added way back in Android 12 on Pixel phones. Based on QPR1, but with the February 2024 security patch, it's the most up-to-date ROM out there. Let's get into these new additions and changes though. Personally, I don't often reboot my phone unless I have a problem, but maybe I'll try and do it a bit more often on my Pixel 4a, as Lineage OS 21 includes a brand new boot animation. There is something eerily similar to me or eerily reminiscent of the OnePlus boot animation here, but it is much better than the previous boot logo that you saw in Lineage OS 20 and older. Lineage should also handle light mode a lot better than on Pixel, as a quick settings panel should match the device theme, unlike being in that infinite half dark mode all of the time. It's this little attention to detail that I think separates this ROM from others out there. Here's the kicker though. I actually haven't been able to get this working as intended on my Pixel 4a. As an actual light mode fan, someone who uses it most of the time, I found it a little bit confusing as it is listed as a core change over AOSP. I'm putting this down to a problem with the 4a's ROM rather than a flat out error in Lineage OS 21. Unless the change itself simply refers to the notification section of the quick settings panel. I'm confused probably as you are, but I do hope to see this change as a half dark, half light mode quick settings panel is something I've always been confused about on Pixel phones and Android in general. There's also a brand new new device setup flow and unless you actually flash Lineage OS 21 for the first time on your phone you probably won't see this enhanced setup flow procedure. The process should be faster now thanks to work from the Lineage team to strip out legacy code and improve the processes. A lick of paint has also been added with a cohesive Android 14 styling. There are further options for device navigation thrown in here over the AOSP builds you probably use used to, and the animations do fit better with the smooth transitions used by Google and Android 14. You may never actually see this screen as a note, but it is an improvement for Lineage OS 21. The default calculator app has also received a facelift here in Lineage OS 21. No extra functionality has been bundled in, instead it's just a reskin to mimic that material use styling of the Google Calculator application. Any change to your wallpaper though, or core device theme, the accenting on this app within the calculator buttons themselves and the menus will change. The default gallery app has been renamed technically to Glimpse, although that hasn't actually changed when you go through the app drawer itself. It still shows as gallery, but the UI is cleaner and more in keeping with the rest of the changes added to Android since Android 12 and that material U overhaul, which is a focus point for Lineage OS 21. Previously, I will say it felt a little bit like an application lifted straight from the Android Oreo era. Lots of the edges though in this new version have been softened, and the result is something that feels more at home in 2024. The core functionality hasn't changed a great deal deal, albums still sort all images, and media content stored on your phone should be there. The new Reels layout, strange naming, does make it easy to view everything from one hub though, and opening an image will let you include common or see common controls like share, edit, and add to favorites. There's a use as option and a detailed information pane. This just makes a gallery app a better replacement for Google Photos or any other basic gallery tools on your phone. Like last year as well, the default camera experience on Lineage OS has received a sizable overhaul 
with the Android 14 update, the changes are definitely more about refinement with material use support being that prime change. You can configure the volume controls to do different things within the camera app itself for the first time. This is super helpful if you want to jump between the in-camera features without touching the screen itself. You can make the volume buttons control the shutter, which is a default, the zoom level, device volume, including all of the ringtones and that kind of thing, or just disable it entirely, which is a really nice touch. HDR video recording has also been added for devices that do support the function by default. On devices like my Pixel 4a, you're able to shoot at 4K 60 FPS despite the lack of official chipset support. Your results may vary when trying this out, and in my experience, video output when using unsupported modes can be a little bit choppy and of poor quality. According to the changelog though, you'll get a warning as well if your device overheats, and the recording will instantly instantly stop if that happens, another nice touch. The Lineage OS devs have claimed that the QR code scanner, which is on the far right of the menu, has also been improved with integrated support for Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi Easy Connect QR codes. It definitely feels a hair faster overall at recognizing QR codes, but nothing would truly impress me there if it were a second or so faster. If you're in a dark environment, you can also set the camera flash to be lit constantly, even when in photo mode to brighten up your subjects and your scenarios, thanks to this latest update as well. It's all just little extra touches that make what is a fairly standard camera application just a little bit better. I'll be the first to admit that I really didn't like the previous version of the default Lineage OS browser jelly. It was super basic on although it did work, it has received some much needed attention here in the Lineage OS 21. However, the changes are not quite as extensive as I would have hoped beforehand. Visually, it is a step up. Each browser tab is even more stripped back than it was previously. There's a consistent address bar with the three dot menu always in view on the top portion of your screen. Tapping that upper right menu gives you the floating menu for an added new tab, checking favorites, browsing history, downloads and options to enter the settings of this Jelly application. It's not quite a full step ahead for me than the original Jelly version, but it is more like a sidestep in my opinion. You do get though per website location permission control, which is great for added privacy, and there are some elements of material you design baked in. Overall, it won't compete with some other dedicated browsers out there, but it's really okay for basic browsing if you'd rather avoid Chrome and all of the other players out there. There are some important improvements made to the visuals of the default contacts, messaging and dialer applications with this system update. One of the most notable though is the full support for light and dark themes on all three in question. And it definitely screams to me that it wasn't supported before, which I probably didn't notice. All three also further support material theming as you'd expect, given it's a focus point for Lineage OS 21. There are no changes to the overall functionality, save some bug and performance improvements on any of the apps in question, but there are consistent color schemes being the main focus point, and it's really nice to see that across all of the default applications in Lineage OS 21. So that's most of the core application changes, but there are some UI tuning options as well that I have noticed. One of those right away was the wallpaper and style application. It definitely looks a little bit more in depth with options to change the app grid layout, the font and icon style. The latter two options have been missing on Pixel since Android 10, so it's nice to see Lineage re-add the option for customizability without requiring a third-party launcher, unless this was added in Lineage OS 20 and I didn't notice previously as I did run this on a backup phone. There are some omissions here though, I must admit. It's not clear why, but the lock screen clock only comes in one style still, the same style that we've seen since Android 12. It can though be switched between the small and large clock or just left to dynamically change based upon waiting notifications on your lock screen. I'd like to see the Lineage devs put their own spin on the lock screen clock styles in the future as this is something that I really do like in Android 13 and Android 14 and I'd love to see just what they could do and what options they would give us to make changes to these. It's also worth noting when you invoke the volume controls with the volume buttons, physical ones on your device, this will slide in from the opposite side to where those buttons are placed on your device. And this just makes it easier to reach without having to contour or change your grip of your phone. And the overflow menu itself now contains dedicated sliders for ring volume and gives you the ability to control four system sound areas all from the one panel. There's also some performance and stability improvements, but because it's infeasible to upgrade the internals on most smartphones, 
naturally as the hardware framework ages, you'll run into performance degradation, slowdowns and bottlenecks. While your own mileage may vary, for the most part, I do think you should see better performance on older hardware when running Lineage OS 21 on a supported handset. I do think you should err on the side of caution though, as there are limitations to older hardware because it is older hardware and you can't upgrade it. Flashing the latest Android build is definitely enticing, but it can be fraught with some issues because optimization isn't always possible despite the best efforts of the teams behind these. Being able to get that latest security patch is definitely a reason to think about a custom ROM though. And I've kept my Pixel 4a as a test unit for ROMs in general. And it's a great to see Android 14 running on this pocket friendly phone. You may need a few Magisk modules though to get wireless payments via NFC to work correctly. That's definitely something to note. The upgrade process for Lineage OS 21 is super simple if you have a supported handset that already has uh, had a previous official build of the ROM installed. I think this is one of the best aspects of this method as it doesn't require a wipe, a device wipe. It's just simple as side loading this using ADB. So in theory, everything on your phone should be safe if you do want to upgrade from Lineage OS and older build. I'd still recommend a quick backup of important information, accounts and files to to be extra safe. You're probably wondering though, should you install Lineage OS 21 on your device and go out and do that right now? Well, like last year, I actually spent around a week or so running this Android 14 build on a Pixel 4a. It's not the most recent phone, it's not the most powerful, so I thought it was a good test bed. And I think this is one of the only ways to get that latest stable build on the device or a device like this. So I think the option is really nice to have. A few things are still missing from Google's OS builds found on Pixel phones, but I'm sure these could and should be slowly added to Lineage OS as it continues to develop over time. I think being able to eke out a few more years from your favorite phone or your favorite tablet while getting a clean streamlined experience means that flashing Lineage OS 21 is definitely gonna be worthwhile, especially if you wanna hold on a little bit longer. It also might be a way to make devices with heavy skins like those from Xiaomi and Oppo a little bit more bearable if you do prefer something lightweight without losing too many customization options and functions. I think if you're holding out for a device upgrade and you have for a long time, definitely try Lineage OS first and see if you can bleed that out a little bit longer. It's something I'm glad I've done with that Pixel 4a, as I mentioned, as it is a nice little test device to have on the go. Something I throw in my glove compartment of my car, leave a SIM in there in case I ever just need a device in an emergency. I think if you want to try Lineage out for yourself, and I do personally vouch for the ROM, then you can find links in the description below on how to get started. It's worth noting that not every single device is supported out there as it wouldn't be fair to do so. And there are unofficial builds that you can flash. I would say stick to the official build roster. There's more support options. And I think the experience is gonna be a little bit better full stop with a ROM from the Lineage OS team that's been approved by them rather than an unofficial build that might have some stability issues of its own. Overall though, I hope you enjoyed this ROM review slash overview. We're hoping to do more of these on the channel, so definitely stay tuned. Hit subscribe if you want to see those. Definitely let me know your comments down below. Until next time though, this is Damien. Thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.